Hey friends, it's Simon and welcome to another video. Now I'm gonna start this completely open and honest with you guys. I've been struggling for the past couple of weeks. I'm kind of naturally an overthinker. And so sometimes when I sit in front of the camera, I'm like, this video has to be perfect. I gotta teach the best techniques to you guys and share something just monumental, right? And I get really bogged down in that. So I haven't been filming for the past couple of weeks because I've kind of been feeling a little bit uninspired. So I took a little bit of a break and now I'm back and I gotta really remember that like, it's just really about sharing techniques and also interacting with you guys because I just love this community so much. So I wanted to sit down today and hopefully share some really fun tips to create some easy shaker cards. Now remember all of the links will be down below in the description box in case you're interested in anything I share and using those helps support me so I really appreciate it. Without further ado, Let's get into it. All right, now for this first shaker card, I'm going to be using the floral stag die. You usually wouldn't think of this as kind of like a shaker die, but I'm gonna show you how to use this kind of bold deer shape and create a really fun shaker out of it. But first I wanna share how to create an easy background. So I'm gonna use the Plaid Builder background stamp today. This stamp just came back in stock. It sold out super fast the first time. So if you love it, I recommend checking it out quickly. So I love this because it's really nice because you can peel apart these strips individually. Most of them peel apart. So you can use them to create and stamp your own type of plaid that you want or you can use them all together like this as a background and create a really great striped background or plaid by flipping it, which I'll share. Now, if this does sell out when this video is out, there is this pinstripe background stamp as well. It's got a really different type of stripe, but it has that same idea where you can peel apart these stripes and you can get a similar look by crisscrossing them and creating a nice plaid pattern too. Now when I'm stamping down this background, I want kind of a tone on tone effect. So I'm going to use this game over color, which is this really nice dark and bold maroon color. And I'm just going to ink up my background stamp all the way across. So just make sure it's fully inked. And then we can go in with our piece of cardstock. Here I'm using a piece of red Spellbinders cardstock. I'll place it right down into my background stamp. And then I'm gonna go in with some sort of pressure tool and just press all around the background to make sure this transfers really nice and smooth. All right, and when we lift this off, check out how that background stamps. And I love that some of the stripes are diagonal, some of them are more solid, and then some of them are checkered. So you get a lot of different variation in it. And now as this dries into the cardstock, it'll smooth out a little bit, but still sometimes colored cardstocks don't take the ink as well. So that's why you'll see it beads up a little bit here. Not a huge deal for me though. But then when it comes to the stamp, I'm going to take it and flip it like this. And then I'm going to go back in with the same color ink pad. So using that game over, and I'm going to ink this all up again. Now, when you're doing this on a piece of white cardstock, you could totally switch up the colors and do two different colors going in different directions. I really love how that looks as well. But here I'm keeping it simple with the tone on tone background because I want texture, but I don't want this to distract from the rest of the card. All right, so here I'm going to take the background we've already stamped. I'm going to flip this then over into our background stamp. And then again, use that pressure tool. Any sort of pressure tool will work or just your fingers and just smooth out over top of the background to make sure that it really evenly transfers. And there you'll see our beautiful background. So if you want to, like I said, you can peel these apart and build your own plaid. But I also love that you have the option to create a really nice easy background by just keeping all the pieces together on the acetate. And there's a little bit of excess ink on our background stamp. So I'm just gonna go in using a little bit of water, spray that down pretty thoroughly because I want it to give a really great watercolor effect. Then I'll bring in a piece of stark white cardstock. I'm going to place this down and actually, I think I want the stripes to be vertical on my card. So I'm going to place this right down into here and then give it some good pressure across just to make sure that it all transfers nicely. Then when I lift this off of the background, check that out. I love how it looks with that sort of watercolor effect across the background. And you can see this stark white cardstock takes that ink and water really beautifully and gives a nice smooth effect. All right, then with my ink pad, since there's so much water on this, it's really easy to clean. My inks don't stain, which is one thing I really love about them. So I'm just gonna go in with my well-loved rag and just wipe off the background stamp. Then it's nice and clean. Now for this next step, if you've seen my videos, you'll know I'm gonna go in using a little bit of Game Over ink gonna go in with my blending tool. This is one of the domed foam blending tools. And I'm just going to go around the edge using the exact same color, again, for kind of that tone on tone look. And this is just going to darken the edge a little bit. And the reason why I do this is because it makes the edge a lot darker, creating kind of a nice depth. And by leaving the center later here, it's gonna draw your eye to that section of the card. And that's where we're gonna put the beautiful focal point. So I really love that little extra detail. It really gives the card lots of depth. All right, so then I'm gonna grab the head and body of the floral stag die. I'm going to place it kind of right in the center 
of our card and then I'll grab a little bit of mint tape to secure this while we run it through our die cutting machine. All right, and this guy is going to act as the shaker window. To cut it out, I'm gonna use the new matte black Platinum 6 from Spellbinders and Scrapper.com. This is a pretty sleek and nice looking machine. I'm gonna use it to cut it out. And this actually comes with the really nice universal plate system, which I really like. It's great for embossing and doing all different kinds of sandwiches. It also comes with pink tinted cutting plates, which aren't my favorite thing in the world, but I'll get over it. I'm sure some of you guys are going to absolutely love it. All right, then I'll place this down, grab my next plate, put it on top, and then run this right through the die cutting machine. I really love these little platinum sixes. I have a white one as well, and they're just easy to pick up and bring it to your desk. They're not too heavy. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go in with a piece of cream cardstock. You can see I've cut lots of antlers from here, and I'm going to cut another set of antlers out and run that right through the machine. Nice and quiet too. That's my unofficial way of getting the little die cut unstuck from the actual die. All right, and then here is the reindeer. And this is going to act as the shaker window. So it's a really nice kind of basic shape. You can sort of tell what it is easily. So find anything from your stash that you don't need all the details to be able to tell what it is and it makes a great shaker window. All right, I like to add dimension using inks. And so here I'm gonna use a little bit of Gur, and I'm just going to tap this onto the bottom of my antlers. Again, just to give a little bit of a darker color at the bottom and add a little bit of dimension to the die cut. It's hard to see on video because these are so light, but it really makes a difference in real life. These antlers actually have a little marking on it because it's meant to help line up when you tuck it behind the deer like that, but we are gonna put it in front of the deer for this card. So all we need to do is just follow that little line that's on the die cut and just cut that part out. So I'm just gonna go in here and cut that little detail off so we can line it up on the front of the card. All right, then I can just go in and line this up, lines up super easily, and then adhere it down onto the card. Now let's move into creating the actual shaker part, which I got a lot of tips to share for. For the shaker window, I recommend using acetate, and I had acetate in here from scrapper.com, which I really like, but finding something clear in my messy studio isn't gonna happen today, so I pulled out a clear plastic sleeve here from Stamp Storage. You can use any sort of clear plastic, and all I'm going to do is just go around and cut a little piece of this out. All right, so I've got this cut down. Honestly, acetate is probably better because I think it's more transparent, but like I said, there's no way I'm gonna find it. So what I like to do is go in here and place a little bit of adhesive on the backside. You want a nice strong adhesive, so here I'm just going in using tape runner. I find it's better than liquid adhesive since liquid adhesive sort of oozes out with the acetate, which I don't really like. I'm going to go in here, place down my piece of plastic, and then make sure it's nice and adhered down with that adhesive. Now this is when we bring in our 3M foam tape. This is my favorite brand of foam tape. I'm going to go in here with a nice strip of it, and I like to go in here and double this up to make it a little bit thicker for more shaker pieces. So I just go right back on top of itself like this, Make sure it's nice and aligned because you don't want any of the sticky edge to be showing. All right, now once you've folded it on top of each other, it should have a wrapper on both sides. Now this is when I'm going to go in here and use my anti-static powder tool. We wanna use this on the edge here to make this less sticky. So this is going to ensure that none of the sequins get stuck on the edge. I know that happens sometimes and it's usually because there's some adhesive along the edge. So again, keep the wrapper on so it's not getting rid of any of the tape edges. It's just the sides that the sequins might catch on that you want to put some anti-static powder on. And then I'll do it on the acetate too to make sure it doesn't kind of stick to the acetate. This is a step you don't want to skip. I find it really helps to make sure there's no static for the sequins. And then also with this foam tape, I like to go in and I'm going to just cut this right down the center in half. This is going to make it thinner, so it's going to be more maneuverable around edges so we can kind of shape it to how we want it to be on the card. And also you'll use a little bit less of it this way. All right, now let's create the shaker path. So I'm going to peel this wrapper off and then I'll go right on the card and just follow along the edge of this reindeer. And this is why we cut it nice and thin so that it's a little bit easier to maneuver around some of the more detailed curves and edges of the reindeer. All right, and if you bring in another piece here, you just wanna make sure that you meet it right up along with the last piece so that there's no openings that sequins can kind of sneak through. And then again, I'll curve it around the edge and meet it right back up at the top edge there. Then for the rest of the card, I can take another piece of foam tape, 
double it up just like I did with the last one so that it's the same exact thickness. And I'll just use this foam tape to fill in the rest of the card and make sure that none of the areas dip in and that they all have the same level of dimension to them. All right, so this is how it's going to line up there. I put a piece of scrap craft card stock onto my card panel here, and this is where I'm going to concentrate the sequins. So I've grabbed a couple of sequin mixes from my container. I have clear sequins. I also have kind of this gold champagne color and then a lighter kind of ivory color as well. And I'm gonna sort of mix these all together. I keep these in some really nice containers. I think they're from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I'll link down below to the really awesome large storage container I have for all of my sequins to keep them nice and organized. But I don't know exactly what brand of sequins these are. I'll try to find ones that are similar down below. And I'm just going to create a nice little assortment of different colors in here that sort of match the vibe of the reindeer and place them all in this section. All right, so once we got my sequins kind of concentrated in the center there, I'll go in with my panel, line that up right in the center, and then we can place it right down onto the card. And you really wanna make sure to apply lots of pressure, especially around the edges, to make sure it's nice and sealed before we start moving it around with those sequins inside. All right, then when we move it around, check out how nice and freely that shakes. I really love it. So if you kind of leave it sitting like this, you get all of the sequins. And then of course, if the card is standing up, they kind of all go to the bottom like this. But I love it and none of them are sticking because of those tricks that we did, which is really great. Now for the sentiment, I wanna use the Joyful Christmas sentiment set. This is a Glimmer Hot Foil Plate set and I love it because all the sentiments are on one and the die is all one as well. So you can easily foil and cut it in one pass, which makes it super simple to create lots of sentiments for your Christmas cards. I do a lot of these in bulk, so I don't have to pull out my Glimmer machine every time. Here I have it in green and red foil and I think the red sentiments are gonna look great on today's card. So check this out, we got lots of sentiments to choose from. I think I like the happy holidays best. Like look how cute that would look just off to the side from the deer. All right, so I've added some foam tape on this to pop it up and then like I said, I really like it kind of hanging off the edge of the deer there. So I'm just going to pop that right up and check out how beautiful that foiled shine is on the sentiment. I love how it looks and it gives it a nice finished effect. All right, so there is the finished shaker card. I really love that plaid background that was so easy to create and how we used that deer, which you usually wouldn't use for a shaker, but we created that beautiful window so that these sequins can shake around really nicely on the inside. For the next card, I wanna create something using this watercolor striped background that we stamped. I'm really inspired by it and I love the more mixed media kind of look you get from it. So I'm going to go in with an oval die and I wanna just create a little focal point kind of area where I can put some little florals. So I'm just going to tape this down and cut it out of a piece of cream colored cardstock. I love this set, but I think it might be discontinued. I'll link down below to something similar with a bunch of layering oval dies. And again, we'll bring in my sleek new Platinum 6 machine, and I'm going to run this right through to die cut it all out. All right, and while we still have this out, I'm going to bring in some green and red cardstock. And what I love about this floral stag die set is along with all the deer pieces, you get several different types of florals and a lot of greenery in here. You can use this along with the deer, or you can use it by itself to create some really beautiful and elegant cards, which I really like. So I'm going to line up the greenery on top of the green colored cardstock here. And then with these dies, Everything on one die is for that flower or greenery. So it makes it really easy that you don't have a ton of little pieces. And I'll place this right onto the red card stock. Super simple. And then I'll go in here and die cut that out. And now again, whenever I'm die cutting, I just like to add a little bit of extra depth pretty much on every step. So here I'm using a little bit of cookie dough on this ivory colored card stock. And this is just gonna give it a really nice warm edge there and make it a little bit darker. Again, kind of drawing your eye to the center of this piece. I'm telling you guys, if you're ever like die cutting and something looks a little bit off or you think you need something a little bit extra, try just adding a layer of ink. It really steps up the piece and gives it a lot more dimension to it, which I really like. And same thing with all the leaf die cuts, I'm gonna use a little bit of fake plant, which is my dark green color. And I'm just going to go in and if the die cut is a little bit more intricate, I like these foam blenders and all I do is kind of pounce on the ink. So I'm not rubbing and you still get all of that great blending and dimension. Last but not least, same thing with the poinsettias. I'm going in using a little bit of game over, which is that nice maroon color we were using. And I'm just gonna hit the edges of the poinsettias just to give it a little bit more life. To put these together, I just add a little dot of adhesive to the center of the poinsettia. We can then pick up the smaller poinsettia and you just wanna take it and rotate it so the leaves are in between the other ones 
and then place it down. When we get into these even tinier pieces, a little gem picker is where it's at. I'll link down to these down below, but they're super helpful. So I'm gonna place that right in the center. Now you could just use a little gem in the center if you want to too, but it does include little pieces. Now you could totally stop here, but I go in with a little bit of liquid glue on top of the center piece, and it comes with these little tiny dots as well. And all you need to do is go in with your little pickup tool, and then just place these dots into that glue and they stick down and create some nice texture in the center of the poinsettia. Next, I wanna stamp down a sentiment and I love these halftone holiday sentiments. It actually has the same sentiments that are in that hot foil plate, but here you can stamp them in different ink colors. And I think for this, I really like the joy to the world sentiment, but I love that you can look through the acetate and kind of test out different options before you commit to one. I wanna make sure the stamps down perfectly and that we get it nice and straight. So I'm gonna go in using my clearly amazing mat from Scrapple.com peel off the film, and then it reveals this nice sticky surface on top. So what we can then do is go in, line up our oval onto the sticky mat to hold it down, and then we can go in with our joy to the world sentiment, and I'm going to place it more off to one side than the other so we have room for our florals. And since we're using this kind of cream color, I wanna keep things nice and warm and use this weeping willow color, which is a nice dark brown from my line. So I'll ink this up, and then this is why we use the Misty to make sure that it stamps down because I said, it doesn't always take the best to the colored cardstocks. So I wanted to make sure we can do as many times that we need to get the most solid impression. The first one was pretty good, but I want it to be a little bit darker and that is perfect. All right, once we're done with this mat, I'm going to kind of lift it like this to release it and peel it off and make sure it doesn't warp. And then I'll place back down the acetate to make sure that no dust gets on top of the Clearly Amazing mat for the next time we use it. And then we'll go in with our poinsettias that we've created and I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue onto the back and then we can place this right around the sentiment. This is why I love having kind of an oval in the center. It really acts as a great grounding place for sort of oh, a sentiment and a bouquet of flowers like this. And with the leaves, if we need to kind of rip off some of the stem to make it fit underneath the poinsettia a little bit better, we can totally do so. Then I'll use my tweezers to sort of lift this up and tuck the leaves right underneath the poinsettia. All right, again, if the leaf is a little bit too long, we can totally rip it. No one is going to know that except for you and me. And then we'll add a little bit more liquid adhesive and place it right underneath the floral. And I'll make things kind of hang off the oval too. It gives it a bit more interest to the design. All right, we'll tuck this right in here. And I like to kind of follow a grouping and cluster around the card to create a nice even bouquet. To finish this off, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of slippery and wet lunar paste, which is this beautiful yellowish gold color. I'll dip a little paintbrush right in the center there. And I'm gonna add this right to the center of my poinsettias just by dabbing a little bit on here. And if you do a thin enough layer, you'll still see all the texture of those little dots that we added, but it's gonna add a really great gold shine to the center of the poinsettias, which really will make them stand out and pop beautifully. All right, and here is a look at that finished card. I love how this one turned out, using the extra ink on the stamp to create this beautiful striped watercolor background. And then going in with that same floral stag die set and getting a completely different and beautiful, elegant look out of it. I love how much versatility is in that die set. All right, you guys, so there we have our finished card making projects. I had so much fun sharing some shaker card tips and using some of our scraps to create another beautiful project. Let me know if you guys liked this video. I think sometimes I overthink things, but leave me comments down below letting me know some new video ideas that you guys wanna see in the future. And again, I'll have everything I use linked down below in the description box and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.